It is my pleasure to introduce our first speaker for the 2011 Eucharistic Congress. Cardinal Francis Arinze is Cardinal Bishop of Velletri Segni and Prefect Emeritus of the Sacred Congregation for Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacraments. Please stand and join in welcoming uh, His Eminence, Francis Cardinal Arinze. May Jesus Christ be praised, now and forever. Amen. Your Excellencies, Reverend Fathers, Religious Brothers and Sisters, Dear Brothers and Sisters in Christ, In the public worship of the Church, the most important day in the year is Easter Day. In the week of seven days, the center is Sunday, and on Sunday, the heart, the high point, is the Mass. It is therefore fitting that at this seventh Charlotte Diocesan Eucharistic Congress, we reflect on the necessity of Sunday and the Sunday Mass, source, summit, and center of Catholic life. Sunday is the Lord's Day, the day of Christ, the day of the church, and also God's gift to us humans. The Eucharistic celebration is central to Sunday. It is important to see Sunday as source, summit, and center of Catholic life. But in the world of today, there are challenges to Sunday, and we need to mention and examine some of them. We shall close by asking ourselves what the Lord is asking of us with reference to the observance of Sunday. So to begin, Sunday is the Lord's day. All time, all his history belongs to God. Every instant, should be spent in adoring and praising Him and rejoicing in His presence. Nevertheless, it remains true that God has singled out a day in the week when humanity should pay special attention to Him. So, as the book of Genesis tells us, so God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. The third commandment is very clear. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. In it, you shall not do any work. The Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. The day of the Lord is therefore not just a day of rest for man, a day to put aside our daily work. It is that. But it is much more than that. It is primarily a day in which human beings give special attention to God, the Creator. A day in which people commemorate the wonders created by God. The day of the Lord is that special day in the week in which people manifest their gratitude to God the Creator by adoration, praise, thanksgiving, and by admiration of the wonders operated by God. And the Church does this, especially by the Eucharistic celebration. Sunday is also the day of Christ the Lord. For the Church, that's what the Sunday is, the day of Christ the Lord. <clears throat> the first day after the Sabbath, the day on which Christ our Savior 
rose from the dead. On that same day, he appeared to two of his disciples on their road to Emmaus and to the eleven apostles gathered together in the upper room. A week later, he appeared again to the apostles with Thomas present, as if to suggest a rhythm. And it was on a Sunday at Pentecost that he sent the Holy Spirit on the apostles, united with the Blessed Virgin Mary and some other disciples. The resurrection of Christ is the fundamental event on which the Christian faith rests. Easter is the greatest day in the celebration of the mysteries of Christ in the church. And Sunday is the day, the space, the heart of the life of the church in which the Pasch of the Lord is commemorated each week. For Christians, therefore, Sunday is the primordial and fundamental feast, the originality of which comes from the celebration of the mystery of salvation carried out in the suffering, death, and resurrection of our Savior. The Second Vatican Council puts together all these aspects in paragraph 106 of its document on the liturgy, which is considered as a grand manifesto on the Christian Sunday. I quote, by the apostolic tradition which took its origin from the very day of Christ's resurrection, the church celebrates the Paschal mystery every eighth day. With good reason, then, this bears the name of the Lord's day, or the day of the Lord. For on this day, Christ's faithful should come together into one place, so that by hearing the word of God and taking part in the Eucharist, they may call to mind the passion, the resurrection, and the glorification of the Lord Jesus, and may thank God who has begotten us again through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead unto a living hope. So Vatican II. It is not therefore a surprise that from the very beginning of the church, the followers of Christ have given great importance to the observance of the day of the Lord. The faithful at Troas got together to break bread on the first day of the week. Acts of Apostles 27. The book of Revelation calls this first day of the week the Lord's Day. Saint Justin writes that the Christians used to congregate on the day called of the sun. Sun, S-U-N. For Christians, Christ is the sun that rises and comes to visit us. He is the light of the world. He is the day which dawns upon us from on high to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. He is a light for the revelation of the Gentiles. As Blessed John Paul II writes in his document on the day of the Lord, Dies Domini 27, in the weekly reckoning of time, the day commemorating his resurrection is the enduring reflection of the epiphany of his glory. It is interesting that English and some other northern European languages have retained this ancient reference to the sun in the word for the Lord's Day, English Sunday, German Sonntag. In the early church, there were therefore very good reasons to transfer the major weekly day of worship from Saturday to Sunday, the day of the Lord. Sunday is also the day of the church. Right from the earliest days of Christianity, Sunday was known as the day on which the community of the faithful gather. The pagan Pliny 
could not find another way to describe Christians, if not as those who were accustomed to come together at dawn on Sunday to sing to Christ and have a meal together. Since Christians celebrate the mysteries of Christ in a special way on the day of the Lord, Sunday takes on also the denomination of the day of the church. The faithful of Christ come together as a visible community to celebrate the memorial of our redemption. When the diocesan bishop in his cathedral church celebrates Sunday Mass with his clergy and with the assistance of deacons and other ministers, the participation of the people of God also there, then the church reveals herself most clearly, says Vatican II in paragraph 41 of its document on the sacred liturgy. It is true that individual Christians can pray in their homes. Indeed, this is necessary. But it is not enough. It is not enough that the disciples of Christ pray individually and commemorate the death and resurrection of Christ inwardly in the secrecy of their hearts, writes John Paul II. Those who have received the grace of baptism are not saved as individuals alone, but as members of the mystical body, having become part of the people of God. So John Paul II in Dies Domini. Christians must absolutely gather, at least on the Lord's Day, to adore God as the ecclesia, as a community, gathered together by the risen Lord, so that they can sing praise and thanksgiving and ask pardon for their sins. They need to be nourished with the Word of God and with the body and blood of Christ. For this reason, says Blessed John Paul II, on Sunday, the day of gathering, small group masses are not to be encouraged. Sunday is also God's gift to man. And when I say man, I mean human being, man or woman. God's gift to man for joy, for rest, and for solidarity. God the Creator also wants this. Joy is one of the marks of the followers of Christ. The disciples rejoiced to see the Lord. The festive character of Sunday the Sunday Eucharist expresses the joy that Christ communicates to his church through the gift of the Spirit. Joy is precisely one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Still, John Paul II. Sunday is also a day of rest from daily work. It is an opportunity to give more time to religion to reflect more on the Creator and His plan of creation and salvation, and to give more attention to the family, as well as to matters social and cultural. Sunday is a day of greater solidarity. It calls on us to think more of our neighbors, those who are sick, old, alone, poor, or marginalized. From apostolic times, the Sunday Eucharist has been a major occasion for the rich to share with the poor. St. Paul organized collections for the poor. On the first day of the week, says St. Paul to the Corinthians, each of you is to put aside and save whatever extra you earn. The Eucharist is the place where fraternity becomes practical solidarity. Some manifestations of solidarity are visiting the sick in hospital or in their homes, providing food for needy families, spending some hours in voluntary work, giving more attention to the suffering of the homeless, the refugees, and immigrants.